Hello, I'm Jay Smith, Senior Pastor at State Street United Methodist Church. I'm so pleased that you're joining us for this service of worship. If you do not have a church home, I want to invite you to join us in person each Sunday morning at 8.08 and 10 a.m. We're located at the corner of State and 11th Streets in Bowling Green. And you can also find us on our website at www.statestreetumc.org. And now may you be blessed by this service of worship. Good morning. One of the most beloved greetings in the church is grace and peace and your responses and also with you. Grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that very much. I'm glad you're here. I want to welcome you to the service. If you're a guest visiting, my name is Jay Smith. I'm really delighted that you've come to be with us on this day. We're thankful to God that you've come our way. If you are a guest, a couple of quick things for you. Please be aware there are Get Connected cards on the pews all around you. We would love to reconnect with you about the ministries of our church and to share with you in that way. Also, after the service, if you want to just bring that card to me at the back doors or to my left here, there will be a member of our hospitality team. We'd love to give you a gift and also share some information with you then. So if you're visiting with us, maybe looking for a church home, I'm very, very biased. You're sitting in a wonderful church family. I'd love to have you be a part of, of our congregation. Now, some of you may be sitting where you normally don't sit because we have some 808 folks intermingled with our 10 o'clock folks. And you might be thinking, they took my pew, but guess what, it's their pew because they're usually here earlier than you are. So uh, are we doing all right, ushers? Do we, have we had any altercations yet? I, I don't think so, I sense a good spirit. I think you've worked that out amongst yourselves, which is a very good thing. Please be aware of the insert that is in your bulletin this morning for a couple of reasons. The first reason, we're going to have the lighting of the Advent wreath in the service, and you'll follow that in the bulletin. And there's a musical piece that we've been learning together during Advent, and you'll want to have that handy at that particular time. Also, on the other side of the insert, the remaining services this week that we'll have uh, for you. This Thursday is a new service that we're providing here at State Street. It's called A Service of the Longest Night. Most of you are aware that the holidays are a difficult time for many people in our families, in our church, in our community. And so there's always a pressure that you've got to be always up and joyous and happy, but that's not always the case for people because they've endured a loss or something that's happened in their lives. And so this service is a service of reflection, of prayer, a service of light and hope and healing. And we just commend that to you, especially this Thursday night, which is the longest night. December 21st begins the winter solstice, and it is the longest and darkest night of the year. And so we hope you'll come or invite someone to be here uh, for that service. Next Sunday, we are having our regular Sunday morning schedule on Christmas Eve. And then 5 o'clock and 11 p.m. will be our Christmas Eve candlelight services. We commend all those to you. But today, if you're a guest visiting, it's a little different this morning. This is a great day to worship God, and we're all here for that very reason. We've come to worship the Lord. Let us worship him.
for our call to worship this morning, you may find your response printed in your bulletin. With joyful hearts, we celebrate the coming King. Advent is marked by a spirit of joy and celebration. Advent is a time to open our eyes to our many blessings. Advent is a time to appreciate the bonds of human love. Advent is a time to remember the promises of God. And we do celebrate the coming King with joyful hearts, and we will begin with our opening hymn. I ask that you not stand until given directions, but we will be singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, found printed in your bulletin.
Today, we light three candles, the candle of hope, the candle of peace, and the candle of joy. The light of this third candle reminds us that we have no reason to be fearful or anxious because God has sent us a savior. We should be glad in this affirmation of God's love for us and pledge to serve him faithfully with joy-filled hearts. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, remind us today and every day that we have good reason to be joyful and forgive us for focusing our minds on negative things. Because you sent your son into the world, we can truly celebrate this season of wonder. Fill our hearts with calm assurance so that we might be pet messengers of peace who joyfully spread your love wherever we go. Amen. And now as we prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I invite you to turn in your red hymnal and join in singing the fourth verse of number 221 in the bleak midwinter. God of peace and hope, joy and love, it is no accident that these weeks of Advent represent the gifts you desire to give us. We wait in hope for your promised and most precious gift, your Son, Jesus Christ. But we confess that we are not good at waiting, so we rush from store to store and search the internet looking for our own gifts to give. We wrap our gifts in brightly colored paper and curled ribbons. Your gift was wrapped in simple cloths. We place our gifts under a brightly lit tree. You place yours in a dimly lit stable. And we know that we receive gifts from you every day without acknowledging that you're the one who sent them. So we thank you now for all of those gifts that we failed to appreciate. And we thank you for the joys we will experience today, including the gift of music and the cantata. We thank you for the gifts you've given each of us and for those who will offer them to you in worship today. Even in this time of anticipation and joy, since we live this side of heaven, life contains its shared difficulties as well. Like Mary, heavy with child, we too can feel burdened by the weight of the concerns that we carry. Only you can transform these burdens into blessings. And so we take a moment now to release those cares to you. We pray for all of those who are impacted by natural and man-made disasters, for all who are sick or who are hurting either in body or in spirit. 
Fill us all with your spirit as we wait in anticipation of experiencing you fully face to face one day. We bring all of these requests in the name of the one whose coming we celebrate, our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray together now the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are indeed blessed people, especially by the gift of Jesus, but in so many other ways. And so we pause now in grateful response to give back a portion to God of our tithes and our offerings. If our ushers would please come forward.
Would you pray with me? Almighty God, help us prepare our hearts and our minds for your coming during this Advent season. Amongst all the busyness, amongst all the activities, Lord, let us turn our hearts back to you that we might understand and fully enjoy and appreciate that gift that you gave us so long ago. Lord, we are grateful for the grace of your son, for his sacrifice, and for all that he means for our salvation. Lord, we now provide these gifts, these tithes and offering, that your kingdom might be furthered. We pray, Lord, that they are pleasing to you and that they are used wisely in your kingdom. In all things, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. In the beginning, God created human beings to love and be loved. God chose his greatest creation for this, but they did not choose God. Again and again they turned away, but God did not give up. He kept calling, he kept loving. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Though they walked in darkness, the people of God remembered his light. They tried everything to get back to God themselves, but they could not. They cried out in their distress. God heard them. He had a plan. 
because they could not get to him, he would go to them himself. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The people walking in darkness shall see a great light. The people walking in darkness, on them a light shall shine. The people of God had walked in darkness so long they did not remember how to live in his light. So God made a plan to prepare their hearts for him again. He sent an angel to a priest named Zechariah with a message. The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will bring many of the people of Israel back to the Lord their God. He will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Through John, God prepared the world for himself. John told the people to turn from their darkness. He told them that God was light so they could come recognize him when he came. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Oh. 
All was ready. God would come, but not in the way his people had expected. He did not come as a mighty king or as a mysterious force. He came as a baby, born to a woman named Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Her name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. God was teaching his people about himself. He does not come with force, but with humility and tenderness. He does not come through human action or will, but by his own perfect plan and loving power. Through Mary, God taught his people how to receive him through grateful surrender. I am the Lord's servant, Mary responded. May your word to me be fulfilled.
God had done it. Jesus, Emmanuel, had come for his people once and for all. Though the world did not know that anything had changed, everything had. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger. Though the world did not know yet the good news, heaven could not contain its joy. The angels were amazed at the beauty of God's plan and depth of his love. An angel announced the good news to some shepherds, and immediately all of heaven was lit up with rejoicing over what God had done. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. <laughs> God had come for his people. He showed them how to live with his life. He showed them how to die with his death. And he offered them a new life, a new way, as he rose from his own grave. He did this not just for one moment in history, but for all moments yet to come. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
God has come for us. We are the people who have walked in darkness, who have chosen our own path. We are the people who have tried to earn our way back to God and failed. We are the people whom God has never forgotten, never stopped loving, never stopped choosing. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. People of God, he came for us. He is coming right this moment. He will come each time we turn to him. He is born into our world every day, and with his arrival, he brings his kingdom right here, right now. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He's helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised. Child in a manger, infant of Mary, outcast and stranger, Lord of all. Come, Lord Jesus, though our world is dark, your light overcomes the darkness. Though we have wandered, your love is steadfast. Though we lose our way, you have made a way. Though our fear is great, your joy is greater. 
Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. God's children did say, Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may you depart with joy in your heart, a gift from God who created you in God's own image. May you depart with joy in your heart, knowing that Jesus Christ is your Savior, God's joy made flesh. And may you depart with joy in your heart, a joy that you may now share with a hurting and broken world through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace and go in joy. And all God's children of joy did say,